Books are the new sales page. Why are books the new sales page? And is it really new? We're going to talk about that here in just a moment. I'm Joshua Lysak. Many know me as the ghostwriter. I've ghostwritten nonfiction books, numerous ones, upwards of 90 by this point. The particular type of book that I write is not just, oh, a memoir, oh, a science book, for example. It's a book that has a very specific function, and that is that of a direct response sales letter. In this training, the context is books are not just books. They're not tomes of information. They are 200 to 300 page direct response sales letters. And they are in fact the most useful sales letters that you could possibly have or your clients could have as a services business, professional services, B2B. I'm going to give you an example of what I mean by that for one of my clients. Let's meet an attorney named Rafe Palmer. This piece was just published on law.com. Rafe Palmer is a Chicago based attorney who did exactly what I'm talking to you about today, which is writing a book to grow his business, specifically by writing a book that generates sales qualified leads coming to him. So he mentions in the piece that yes, of course he sold books. Yes, of course, he made a little bit of cash from that. But notice what happens. The far bigger boost was to the bottom line of his law firm. And by the way, he works with many business owners, entrepreneurs. So what you are going to learn today is not just B2C, but B2B, primarily B2B, in fact. Suddenly, my firm's name was everywhere. People read the book, then called up to see if I would represent them. So many calling from out of state, he said. Not just sales going strong, but a book that grows his business. Instead of looking for clients, they sought me out. I gained new authority as an expert, which has led to me writing a second book, ironically. Okay, I'm back. And this is what I want for you, either for yourself or for clients of yours. To be able to write books that are better than sales pages, meaning what they can do is they can go out to your prospects or your clients' prospects and reel them in. Rather than being a place that traffic comes to you, your book goes out, finds them, and brings them back. It's less like hunting, or perhaps it's more like fishing, and uh, less like fishing and more like hunting. Pick the metaphor there that works for you. Okay, so how do you, in fact, write a book that is a sales page? That's better than a sales page. How do you do that? Well, I want to walk you through today exactly what I've taught to Rayford Palmer and to my other clients. Some of them have sold tens of thousands of books, hundreds of thousands of books even. We've had actual bestsellers, number one overall Amazon bestsellers, Wall Street Journal bestsellers, so on and so forth. But the most important book to write is the one that if you sell fewer than 250 copies, you are still able to generate more than 1 million US dollars in business because you've written it for the right person. So let's talk about that today here on our little sheet. Now, whenever I begin writing a book, I don't start with, okay, author, what do you want to write about? No, 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 no. We do not start there. We start with, above all, what is the ultimate outcome of the book? This, by the way, ought to be the ultimate outcome of working with the business. So what do you get out of it? The book. If you have followed it, if you have done what has been advised, what are you then able to do? What do you gain? What do you get? The example, Rayford Palmer, his book, he's a marriage and family lawyer, and he does work with couples who are ending their relationship. Do they want to learn about the law? Do they want a handbook or a guidebook? No, they just want this done, which is why the book is called. Rafe's book is called, I Just Want This Done. That is the ultimate outcome. 
My own book, The International Death Seller, so good they call you a fake. That is the ultimate outcome. And that if you do as I teach to systematize your services so that you can create predictable quasi miracles for your clients via your services, your courses, or your information products, such as books, your results will be so good that your competitors will say you're a fake. That is what you have to start with. And by the way, that's going to be the title. That's going to be the title. From here, after you understand what the ultimate outcome is, you have to understand to whom this outcome is valuable. Who is it most valuable? If you are a beginner, a beginner freelancer, for example, and you see a book title that is about becoming so good they call you a fake, well, that's terrifying. That's terrifying. That's not valuable. You don't want to be called a fake. You're just the beginning of your journey. That's way too risky. Way too risky. You can't afford that. So it's not for you. It's not for you. It is a book for someone who is already successful. They're in a no man's land of intermediate success, where they're further along than where they have been, but they're not near as far along as they feel like they should be. Something is missing. They're not getting noticed. The people who've optimized for marketing and advertising and PR are kicking their butts, even though their services and their results are objectively inferior. What are they missing? That is who my book is for. That is to whom my promise is valuable. The ultimate outcome. Now, understanding this is valuable because of the following. You have a few beliefs to change. You have a few beliefs to change. Going back to Rafe's book, Rafe's book and Rafe's firm is primarily positioned for business people, <clears throat> entrepreneurs, executives, people who are used to paying to get things done. This is a problem. I have money. Money solves the problem. I no longer have a problem. It is the belief that they can just make things go away. They can just get things done. Applying that belief to the end of a relationship where there's legal entanglement is a disaster. It is a disaster because it escalates tension and it accelerates the involvement of lawyers in a litigation process, which means they lose a lot more money than they thought they were going to in this process. So there's a few beliefs that need to be adjusted. One of those beliefs is that the best way to end this relationship is going in guns blazing and firepower and making accusations and drama and throwing my weight around. That is a belief that's not helpful at all. A belief that I have to counter in my book, So Good They Call You a Fake, is that negative PR, bad reviews, are career killers, when in fact, they are career accelerators. And I have to counter the, that belief early in the process. In fact, I devote the first four chapters of the book to that belief. Rafe Palmer, my client in his book, he spends two to three chapters roughly on assaulting that belief first through his own story, as I did in my book. My own story is a demonstration that the belief that is held intimately by readers for whom this book is going to be for, I have to allow them to see themselves in me and my story, walk them through how I had the belief change, and as a result, they can too. As a result, they can too. As a result, they can change their belief to, to what? To a better belief, to a better world. 
which is what your book is, in fact, unlocking. Now, as part of this, what I want you to do with this book that functions as the new sales page for yourself, for your clients, what are those beliefs? What are those beliefs? And we're going to call them broken beliefs because they leave them broke or broken, meaning they're going to lose money. They're going to lose time. They're going to lose energy or they're going to lose even more than that. What consequences are there for the beliefs that they have? This is critical to list these. I mean, literally list these in order. What are the broken beliefs? Both in Rafe's case and in my case, there's not just one, there's myriad broken beliefs. For example, the intermediate no man's land service provider that my book, So Good They Call You a Fake, is for. Yes, there's the belief that you should shy away from negative attention. If the trolls come out, you should put yourself away. You should not toot your own horn. Merciless self-promotion is for scammers, these sorts of things. But also that I'm not the type of person that should write a book. I should just do more marketing. Okay, that's a broken belief. My business can't really release information products like courses because excuse. That's another broken belief. The best way to market my business is to just be everywhere. Or let's say, there's a limit to the amount of money I can charge in my line of work, in my industry. There's a ceiling on the price. All of these are broken beliefs. You got to list these out, buddy. We got to list these out. And then what you're going to do is you're going to order them in the order you need to break them. The order you need to break them. You're going to break the broken beliefs. A negative and negative makes a positive. You see. So you're going to order after listing. You're going to order and you're going to reorder these beliefs. Perhaps there are five, or there are 10, or there are 20. As you list these out, you're going to clump them together. For example, perhaps there are three or four broken beliefs I've identified that my target readership have about marketing themselves. Okay, that's a category of broken beliefs now. A category that merits its own chapter. Yes, you knew where I was going with that, didn't you? And so this process of ordering or perhaps reordering, you're going to find that there are categories of beliefs that are similar, that are topically similar. And that means you're likely going to have yourself proto chapters out of this broken belief inventory that you're going to get. And then as you do that, and you create yourself a proto list of chapters, you are then going to think in terms of dominoes, we're going to call it the domino method. What this means is, imagine Going in sequence, beginning to end. Okay. The first, let's take my book here, for example. So good, they call you a fake. The first broken belief that there is, is I don't want to be called a fake. Or do I? What's this guy getting at here? That's what I have to tackle first. After I've done that, and I've replaced that broken belief, the result of that is, oh, I guess I do want to be called a fake. How do I do that? How do you do that? This is the next domino you see. Domino method. How do you do that? Is to systematize your way, your 
process. The approach that you take with clients, customers, users, and so on to get them the enviable results, or in this case, to help them arrive at the ultimate outcome. Well, I already, I've already done that. I've already systematized that. I've already documented it. Ah, that's the next broken belief. I've already done this, Joshua. What are you talking about? I've already read books on systems and systematizing and systemizing and systematizing. I've already done all that. Haven't I? So now I need to counter that broken belief with no, you have not. And what I place in front of them is the concept of the Lego set, the Lego instructions, which are piece by piece, step by step from I have this pile of bricks to I have this castle or the spaceship or this ultimate outcome that I have built. And that you will document step by step with no step skipped everything they need to do to get to the ultimate outcome. That is what I mean by documenting your system for genius. Oh, that's what he meant. After that, there's a number of broken beliefs that I have to counter, which are well, maybe now what I should do that I've documented this is I should, and then there's going to be a number of shoulds. They should all over themselves at this point. Well, I should go and I should train people, or I should create a certification program, or I should build a course, or I should just start, see all of these shoulds, right? No, these are broken beliefs. The next thing that you must do is write the book. You convert your system for genius into the masterpiece, the tome, the tangible physical product, the Bible of your brand, the extended brain of your life's work, your system for genius in print. Ironically, what I'm talking to you about what you ought to be doing. And from there, you're able to do a number of things with it. Okay, so you're probably already mapping what I'm talking about onto your situation. So it's a little bit of recap of what we've got so far. In order to write a book that is useful to you or to your clients, as Rafe's book is to him, by the way, I assume at this point you've gathered that Rafe's a client of mine, but let's level that to state the obvious. You start with the ultimate outcome. Meaning what are people going to get from this? What are they going to gain? If it's productivity handbook for women, nobody wants to buy that. What is the outcome? The ultimate outcome? No, not an outcome. Uh, improve productivity for women? Or efficiency for women? No. No. This fellow recently published a book called buy back your time. That's an example of an ultimate outcome. Oh, following this book, you're able to buy your time back. It's a book about productivity. Okay. And employee management and whatnot. Delegation. If it was delegation secrets, or if it was the ultimate employee and contractor training guide, do you want that? Not as much as buy back your time. I could have called so good they call you a fake. The system for systems, that would have been accurate. That would have been accurate, but that's not what anybody wants, frankly. So you think about your ultimate outcome. If you're even a semi-experienced copywriter, you will understand how to develop, how to devise for yourself or for your clients, what an ultimate outcome is. From there, you get your title. Now, right alongside this, to continue the recap, is to whom is this outcome valuable? Most valuable, perceptibly valuable, obviously valuable. Well, there's going to be populations that it is not for, obviously. Rayford Palmer could have written his book for, let's say, financially disadvantaged single parents. Is that who he wants to be working with? Consider who you or who your clients want to be working with. 
That's who this book is for. Okay. That's who this book is for. Once and as you comprehend that, you are then going to list what are the belief changes they need to have, have happen, or specifically the broken beliefs that they have. You brainstorm them, you dump them, you get them out, and then you're going to order them, reorder them. And yes, you'll do so in categories, and it will become apparent to you in what order do these belief changes need to occur? What is the most broken belief that if they still believe this, everything else is not even worth talking about? It's like selling someone a solution they don't even believe that there's a problem for in the first place. So in that obvious case, the first broken belief, the first chapter is going to be about proof that there's a problem. Proof that there's a problem. Unequivocal proof, undeniable proof that makes them sweat. That would be the first belief change that needs to happen. And so you're going to see these proto chapters developed where categories of beliefs, or maybe there's three or four broken beliefs about a specific topic. Well, that's a category. That's probably going to be a single chapter. And imagine you've got, you're going to give yourself 12 chapters or your client 12 chapters in this book. You're going to see, okay, well, this is probably in, obviously a chapter one, and this is somewhere in the middle. And there's a bunch of broken beliefs that are kind of like advanced stuff that are very specific. So, okay, what else is missing? Then you got to think like a Lysic with a domino method. Okay, so after I've replaced this belief, what do they need to know next to, to get them closer to the ultimate outcome? We're driving forward. Think Lego instructions. Driving towards the ultimate outcome of building something beautiful in their lives. What comes next? And then the dominoes each fall one on the next until you get to the end and you've built something with them, something beautiful. And you may need to add those chapters. There might not be any broken beliefs corresponding to chapters two, three, four, and five, but there might be a whole cluster F of broken beliefs related to the ch topics of chapter six, that category. That's okay. What I've just laid out here to you is the best way to write a nonfiction book that grows your business, that grows your client's business. Because what it does is it is a sales page, the ultimate sales page that you can send ahead and you can leave behind with clients. When you're an author or when your clients are an author, you are the news. You're no longer a walk and talk and advertisement for your business. They bring you on, they introduce you, not as founder of or CEO of, as author of this ultimate outcome that everyone listening wants. Okay, how do I get that? I'm paying attention now. You go from being a salesman or a salesperson to being a source. Would you like to be a source? Write your book the way I've just described right here, this process. I assume you can write. If for whatever reason you can't or don't want to, at Joshua Lysick, and I can take it from there. Ghostwriting, editing, Slapping you on saying that's a terrible book idea. Why would you ever want to write that? I can help you with that. But this alone will take you so far. It might take you all the way to the ultimate outcome. And if you have questions, feel to reach out. You can find me on Twitter X or everywhere else that you might find on social media. Lysikghostwriting.com. Enjoy.